Hello, everybody, and welcome to the final round of the fifth annual Mardi Gras cook-off here in the Coal Fray, the fresh paradise of Haiti. I am Master Chef Abby Dayton. So, are you ready to meet this year's Recipe Challenge champions? Yes, yes! yes. Huh, looks like the judges couldn't decide, and we have two winning recipes. For the protein challenge, we have Leah Schroeder and her winner, winner chicken dinner. Thanks, Abby. I'm so excited the judges like my recipe. They loved it. Here's your award. Thanks. And in the vegetable category, for her one potato, two potato, sweet potato pie, we have Emily Abramzik. Great job, Emily. Thanks, Abby. Here. Whoa, so I understand that you two are actually the coworkers and friends? That's right. We met in college at Michigan State, and today we both work at Apple Ag Systems. I'm an agricultural engineer that specializes in sustainable food systems. And I'm a bioenergy engineer. I work on renewable energy solutions. Cool. So you two are engineering friends who are also amazing cooks. That's awesome. Tell us a little bit about the inspiration for your award-winning recipes. Well, about five years ago, Lee and I attended Urban Ag Cook conference here in La Colafre to learn about the famous fresh ag tax system that finally brought prosperity to Haiti. And while we were here, we enjoyed the most delicious Creole cooking. Mm -mm -mm. So when we got back to Michigan, we tried to come up with our own recipes. And we did. And here we are. Emily, you mentioned that Fresh Ag Tech finally brought prosperity to Haiti. What do you mean by that? Well, Abby, Haiti wasn't always the prosperous country that is today. Back in 2015, it was still recovering from the devastating 2010 earthquake that destroyed 60% of Jacques Mal. I know. Haiti was one of the poorest countries in the world, and it was dependent on international aid for over half of its food supply. Haiti was also near the top of the Global Hunger Index Scale, which measures the country's ability to feed its people. It was way up here in the extremely alarming range. An extreme deforestation wiped out lush rainforests, and erosion caused landslides during tropical storms. Topsoil was washed into the Caribbean Sea, destroying coral reefs. Wow, that's bad. I guess I didn't realize that things were so desperate back then. When did things finally turn around? Well, in 2015, urban agriculture was all the rage, especially in rebounding cities like, well, Detroit. Yes, I know. It was even an annual research topic in a future city competition. That's right. So to address food insecurity, agricultural engineers from Jacques Mel developed a system that is an intersection between sustainable food production and energy self-sufficiency. They call it Fresh Ag Tech. Fresh is fast, renewable, ecological, secure, and hyperbaric. It takes into account the whole food print required to produce, well, food. What's food print? You know, energy, water, air quality, efficiency, things like that. And due to fresh ag tech, La Cola Frey, which means fresh town, blossomed along the Grand River. And the rest, well, it's history. What an amazing story. It is amazing. Come over here. Let me tell you a bit about fresh. OK. First, fresh is fast. It's fast from farm to fork because the farm is in the same city as the fork. Fantastic. Local production in the agriculture towers reduces refrigeration needs, which means fresher, more nutritious food. And since transportation costs are lower, food is also more affordable. Lucola Frey's transportation system is super fast. Yes, Hydro Hyperloop is fast and efficient. Personal pods click to public transit at transport towers. And cargo, including fresh food and water, is delivered fast to locations throughout the city and beyond. Cool. Fresh is also renewable. R5 power produces more energy than La Cola Frey needs. R5 power? What in the world is that? R5 stands for Reliable Revenue from Robust Redundant Renewable Energy Sources. Osmotic energy is generated where the river meets the sea, and solar thermal systems create power and fresh water at our desalination station. Our biggest source, however, is generated in the agricultural zone. You see, the chickens produce over 750 tons of manure each year. Ew, that is a lot of chicken waste. It is, but the bioenergy system turns the manure into electricity. Let me show you. Here is our agriculture towers. Chicken and vegetable waste is collected below the tower. Then, the anaerobic treatment converts it into biogas, which generates clean electrical and thermal energy. Huh, waste energy. That's sweet, not smelly. 
The Ian Fresh stands for ecological. It's a closed loop ecosystem. As Leah mentioned, chicken waste is converted to energy. The waste also fertilizes the sweet potatoes, and sweet potato waste, which is stems and leaves, feed the chickens. Chickens and sweet potatoes, the same proteins and vegetables in your award-winning recipes. Yes, chicken is popular in Haiti. It's also more efficient to raise than other livestock. For instance, producing one kilogram of chicken takes four times less water and eight times less energy than one kilogram of beef. That's a huge difference. It is. Fresh is also secure. A high global hunger is next to a thing of the past, and residents can feel safe due to Safe 3D. Safe 3D? What's that? Safe stands for Seismic Activity Foundation Enhancement, and 3D printing enhances stability. Let me demonstrate. In case of Whoa. an earthquake, this building is not safe because it does not have safe 3D. Not good. This building, however, does have safe 3D. So, in case of another Whoa. earthquake, this building is well safe. That's amazing. Green thumb is also another security feature of Fresh. Yes, I know. I've heard of the real-time holographic communication and wellness interface. It has links to the triple redundant IntelliCellus. Finally, Fresh is hyperbaric. Hyperbaric? Is that related to the hyperloop we mentioned earlier? No. Oh. Hyperbaric means higher than atmospheric pressure. I will explain it using the ideal gas law. PV equals nRT. At constant volume and temperature, an increase in pressure results in the increase in the amount of oxygen. Hyperbaric agriculture increases crop yields by two to three times, and livestock stays healthier. Oh, okay. So to summarize, there is a plan, and Fresh Egg is its name, right? That's right. F R E S H. F R E S H. Oh my God. Okay, my question. What does your future city have as an enticement to offer potential business investors? Well, Fresh Ag Tech is a great way to entice business owners and business companies to come to La Cola Frey. You see, people can work in Fresh Ag Tech headquarters that helps, as what Emily does as, as an agricultural engineer, is to manage the chickens and the sweet potatoes to make sure they're maintaining a healthy way of life. We also have people that work in the agriculture tower, such as the agricultural engineer, that helped with their green thumb to see how the chickens are doing and make sure they're along with the sweet potatoes growing it properly. And we also need bioenergy engineers to work on the waste to energy system and make sure that everything is going correctly. And we also have job opportunities in the commercial district where you can work at Cray Linda Cafe, which is named after our mentor, Dr. Gerhardt. And we also have job opportunities in the fire rescue and city services. And we also have a low, like a, we have a good tax base, so that, want, makes, that makes people want to come live here because you have good education and schooling systems. Okay, I have a question. Um, so you have a lovely city here and everyone wants to come and live there, um, so you're gonna get population growth. What are you gonna do about um, the food systems when you have many more people there? Well, we have modular scalability in our agriculture towers. So, like for Haiti, we started with one tower, and as we started to grow the city, we produced a revenue stream from our energy sources because we get 100 megawatt hours of energy from our waste energy system. And then we use 25% of that as a revenue stream so we can put it back into building the agriculture towers. Though Haiti is made up of, um, three-fourths of Haiti is made up of mountains, we can't exactly go everywhere, so we have to build up rather than out. And because we have modular scalability, as they said, 
we can build up, up instead of out to help the environment grow, too. Thank you. So how does your city support a healthy lifestyle for its residents? Well, our city helps support a healthy lifestyle for our residents through our many walking paths throughout the city. We have a running <coughs> path right here, and that allows citizens to run and jog and use piezo, which takes mechanical energy into electricity, to, electric, to electrical energy, to power their green thumbs. So they're exercising and getting energy. And you can also go hiking up in the mountains along the Flora and Fauna trails back to Basin Blue, which is this beautiful waterfall retreat. Also, we have a retreat up on the moon. Our gyro spaceport takes people every three days in a space shuttle to the moon for a one-week one resort stay. And we also have parks <laughs> in every district. So we have a park in the residential zone, a park in the mixed-use commercial, and a park in our industrial zone. And because we have all those parks, we, we think it's also good for people to have a good mental and a good mental energy, so we have a museum and library over the river. And since we grow our food right in the city, it makes it fresh when the people go and buy it. And where are the markets placed where the people can buy? Um, we have a farmer's market in the agricultural zone right here next to the fresh headquarter towers. And so it's really easy for somebody to catch the Hydro Hyperloop and go right on over to the Agricultural District and go get, pick up their food. The Hydro Hyperloop can move people, small cargo, goods of food, and water throughout the city and beyond because it uses vacuum technology. So it goes 50 miles an hour in the city and 200 outside the city. You guys have done a great job. Uh, Why did you pick the sweet potato? We chose sweet potatoes for Haiti because it's one of. It's funny because the diet doesn't have much folic acid, does it?